But Hiroko Yoshida is with uh, Centresis, and we're gonna let you take over. And uh, do you need, does anyone, if anyone needs a mic, I'm gonna go check into whether we can get one, because I know your voice is a bit. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. In the yes. back there? Okay, I'll do my best. <laughs> uh, can I start? Okay, uh, thank you so much for inviting us over to Waste to Worth Confidence. I learned so much from this conference and I'm representing actually two company now that the uh, Centuriesis and CNP. CNP is a division, uh, Centuriesis is that the a company focused on uh, manufacturing of decan decanter centrifuge and the CNP is uh, that the focusing on carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus, the nutrient recovery. Um, so, um, so what we really do is the manual solid separation uh, actually solid separation because it bring up lots of benefits as everybody is aware that it will decrease the frequency of stretching and also make it uh, make it easier to transport or store manure but increasingly we are asked to do is nutrient management because as much as 70 percent of P and 50 percent of nitrogen in manure is present in a particulate like non-dissolved form so some, uh, this is that, uh, this is uh, just to give a little information about what decanter centrifuge does. It's a continuous process. We feed manure that the, our machine spins very fast, 3,000 RPM, and use a centrifugal force to separate uh, even the fine solids from um, the liquid. And I just want to give a, one thing. Everybody thinks that the centrifuge uses a lot of electricity. If you calculate, it's that the three to four cents per cow per day. So if it's 3,000 daily car operation, the annual landing cost is around $30,000 on electricity. So it's not as bad as people think it is. I just <laughs> wanted to throw the number. <laughs> then, uh, um, yeah, we... So we do have experience working with manure since 2000. So we've been around this business for a long time. So we are a little bit hesitant to say we are innovators. But um, for daily manure, like actually choice of um, the solid separation technology is very critical because it ten the phosphorus is tend to bound to be a very fine particulate form, less than 125 microns. So some of the technology, conventional technologies like screens and screen press cannot handle the particulates this small. So it goes to here. So this is the data we collected in, we've been landing a pilot test and then full scale installation site. And these are the actual data collected at this site. So as you can see that the, um, the bottom is a screen and then screen press, they do great at solid removal but as you can see that there is a limit on how much phosphorus they can take out. And so what centrifuge can do is that we can increase the solid separation, but we can almost triple that the phosphorus separations. And since, so it's also I wanna point out that the, we've been moving to this direction because we are constantly changing the geometry of the centrifuge to actually fit to manure, because we realize the manure and human manure it's totally different. So if you come to visit our site in Kanosha, I'll actually open the centrifuge and show you that uh, the difference in the cone ge geometry um, that will allow us to do a good separation. We're not gonna say we made everybody happy, but um, uh, yeah, so then, then we also did a study in swine manure and uh, it was actually, did a, we had a, I dug up a study happened in 1999 and 2000, actually done with North Carolina State University. So I'm looking for somebody who remember this. <laughs> but, um, that uh, we went to Lagoon, we took that, uh, uh, sorry, we took the Lagoon uh, bottom sediment and then we took this, uh, the, the portable, a mobile centrifuge units to dewater that the bottom sediment. And so for this one, we did use a polymer, and then we can actually produce spotlessly clear centroid. And so these are the data uh, we, what, what we can get um, 
if we use a uh, polymer uh, product. And so uh, the from lagoon sludge, we can get around 24 to 25% solid. And then this is flush waste, uh, we can go up to 34%. Um, and the one thing is that we can actually get this high of the solid without using polymers. Only problem, only difference is that we don't get this like crystal clear water that the, uh, the research project needed. But um, if somebody is interested in trying this again, we are more than happy to send our mobile units and the boys to actually stand in a lagoon. <laughs> <laughs> so then the, the last usually a recycling challenge came in because we live in Wisconsin, so phosphorus is a nemesis. So if that the material, um, we are always asked to go down as low as possible. As possible. And then uh, what we thought is, okay, the centrate still have this much phosphorus. If we can deplete this, we can apply more on the land through irrigation. So that was the whole idea that uh, let's do more to tackle the dissolved portion of the phosphorus. Mm -hmm. They're having trouble hearing you in the oh, back because okay. of the, all the noise in the hallway. Excuse me, everyone. Thank you. to do is like let's turn the, the, uh, the dissolved component into a solid. If we cannot capture the dissolved component, let's just turn it into the form that the centrifuge can capture. So what we did is, um, uh, so the studiovite is the crystal of uh, ammonia and magnesium phosphate and known as a nuisance because it causes a clogging of the pipes, which some of you might be familiar, but it's a uh, it also causes uh, like uh, dewaterability problem, especially in the municipal wastewater business. And uh, but in a controlled environment, can be hard harvested as a fertilizer. And so what we try to do is that we try to build this air product system, which is developed for human waste, <laughs> wastewater treatment plant, to another uh, to the, the area of agricultural. A production system. So Airflex utilizes aeration, not um, caustic soda to elevate pH. So only thing we do is actually the icing salt. And, and feed with a solid content up to 5%. So we can actually go before the decanter centrifuge to turn that the dissolved uh, phosphate into a particular crystal form. And it's been implemented successfully in a municipal wastewater treatment plant. So it's like, it's innovation, but it's somewhat proven technology. Um, so this is what is proposed. We should be like uh, in between anaerobic digester, but looking at the lagoon, we can probably work um, without anaerobic digester as well. Um, so then Airflex reactor, and then it will come with decanter centrifuge and then about 50% of the studio by crystallized can be harvested as uh, uh, can be harvested as studio by um, so for that the, I'm actually we are still looking for that the system that can be compatible with this to remove ammonia because the centrifuge can use create a crystal clear centrifuge so any kind of ammonia removal system could work better if we can put right here in a center right line. And uh, membrane technologies, because um, we also depleting a lot of carbon dioxide, the pH is already high. So if any of your person can, if we can tag up and then do this project happen together, take my card. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so that was one thing we are really excited, interested in. And just to add a couple more about recent development, 
one thing is that the, so we changed a modify a centrifuge and we now call it DT centrifuge. And uh, we actually did a seven daily firm uh, pilot test in British Columbia, like ranging as small as 300 daily cow. And no chemical addition because this is what we were asked to do. <laughs> and then we are achieving at least 50%. And actually, we can achieve up to like 70%, but we are asked not to use the number because it was too high. And then the consultant who actually collected sample and did the testing said that he's not comfortable yet. But um, we can do it. 50, we can be allowed to say 50%. And then the great thing is like 200 daily farmers show up for the open house, and we are like, oh, nice. <laughs> That was really nice. And then the second thing is Airflex. We actually made one. Uh, developed the 10 gallon per minute mobile pilot reactor. We taught it around seven pilot test sites all over the United States from Miami to Pima County to Denver to San Pedro, uh, Wisconsin, which is a small site. <laughs> and the great thing is that the, based on that, two full scale installation is coming up this year. So if you, later this year, like around winter time, um, if you are around uh, Maryland or Ohio, Cleveland, please come and join us. Um, we can show you how it works in the large scale in human poop. <laughs> the last thing is we actually acquired one more process from University of Wisconsin, Madison, that it actually complemented it to our Airflex process. Um, so it's a calcium-based process, small reactor. It requires centrifuge. It's a little bit complicated than Airflex, so if you have an interest in it, let me know. And that we are actually doing a pilot test in Woodbridge wastewater treatment plant just outside of Chicago. So if, again, if you are in Chicago area, give me a call. I'm more than happy to tour the site. So, and so any of these questions, um, please let me know. And then I also, again, we are looking for somebody who can buy our center huge, but also we are looking for somebody who can put their ammonia removal technology on our center line to actually make it adaptable, not only in Wisconsin, but the area that the nitrogen is the limiting factor for manual application. So that is said, do you have any questions? Yeah. I have, I have the, the the two systems that you're putting in, yeah. uh, are, are those municipal or are those livestock related? Uh, so <coughs> this one, I'm sorry, this will be a wastewater treatment plant. So one uh, process will be, um, yeah, so both of them a wastewater treatment plant and then, uh, sorry, I can't remember the, the size at the top of my head, but if you can have your card, I can forward the information. I'll get you later. Yeah, yeah. Yes. In your uh, demo uh, scale uh, pilot reactor, yeah. has that been uh, tried on other maneuvers, swine? That is one thing is that, that we need a little bit of financial assistance for. So for this one, we made for wastewater treatment plant. So that we, for in order to adapt to the uh, manure, we need to put some kind of screening process to, because um, if we feed like a really fibrous material, it's gonna be <laughs> So that was the part that we need to develop. That will be the innovation comes in. And again, if you have any money, <laughs> to um, work on this part and push the limit of the reactor. I, I'm, 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 I input on this. Yes. Any other questions? Anyone have money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one thing. We have a reactor. Removing this reactor is a little bit expensive. So again, if you have a, like, five, ten thousand. $20,000 to move, just to move this reactor. <coughs> I mean, we can go anywhere in the United States. Shipping to Canada was really hard. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thank you, Haruko.